No, I said this earlier, but I, I, I don't think that being an elected 25 year old is comparable to being an unelected, elevated 30 year old to the House of Lords. I mean, those are so disparate and so different. I just think it's almost a waste of time to keep talking about it because the comparison is just not there. It, it, it's like comparing apples and oranges. I couldn't think of a better comparison. <laughs> <laughs> being being, um, being a, a, a bicameral parliament that has an elected chamber and an unelected chamber, like we can debate the, mer the merits of that and whether or not it should exist, but we have it. So is, should we not have the same joy for a 30 year old going into the Lords as we do for a 25 year old? Not this 30 year old. Well, no. I, I was, I was, I was trying to, I was trying to like <laughs> calm down, but I, th I think it, a thirty-year-old who has achieved something, done something of genuine note, genuine public service, genuinely improved, the, enhanced the lives of people in their community, in, in their community across the country, maybe achieved something in business, sports, even politics, mm. something genuinely of note. That thirty-year-old, there might be an argument for them to be elevated to the House of Lords, not Charlotte Owen. Did Maybe you need to have a system where you get like OBE, MBE, and then you can qualify for the Lords or something like that. Like there must be some kind of barometer for like, what, well, why are you going to, because what you do in the Lords is you scrutinise all of the legislation that comes through the Commons, right? I'm sorry, I know I'm speaking stupid to both of you because you both know that. But obviously, <laughs> if you are 30 years old, how on earth are you going to be poring over a, a, a long immigration brief and deciding is that the right move for the country if you've had a couple of years in industry mm -hmm. it's the same reason I mean there's loads of people in the Lords Sean Bailey for example yeah. what the hell is he doing in there <laughs> <laughs> just losing mayoral elections yeah I really think there's um, I think there's I think there's a bit of dis dissonance between your both your positions on this I've got to be honest I think like if we're cognitive gonna be, dissonance yes okay I think if we're going to have um 25 year old kid and be like great young person in, par in parliament in the house of commons the same argument has to hold for Charlotte Owen I disagree because the weight behind Keir Matt Hers <laughs> Keir <laughs> Matt Hers um, Keir, we Keir's <laughs> legislative role it, the weight comes from the electorate and so there is there is an inherent yeah, yeah, I, justification no look I get that I understand that but the House of Lords isn't elected, like it is really. No, but, is. but but there's other reasons to be, but it's just inherent, the cronyism is so manifest and so absurd that Charlotte Owen got to the House of Lords. Yeah, the structures of power are different as well when you're in the Commons. Just because you've been elected as an MP doesn't mean that you're going to go get anywhere near the front bench. It doesn't mean that you're going to be able to start putting down, you know, big piece, pieces of legislation and have like, you know, weight given to it. I mean, how many private members bills get put mm -hmm. down and no one talks about them mm -hmm. because they're all crap? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Andrew Bridget spent the latter half oh, of the last yeah. parliamentary term talking about um, vaccines being dangerous. Do you know how many times that bloke was in Parliament, in the Commons, trying to tell people? <laughs> no one <laughs> took any notice. <laughs> um, but in the Lords, you've actually got some quite serious, well, quite serious power for not really doing, for, uh, and no comeuppance. Mm -hmm. She's there for life. She gets, she gets to make laws for life. She's thirsty. She could live till she's 100. 70 years of... Charlotte Owen deciding what happens in oh, this yeah, country. Oh yeah, boom. Yeah, Keir can only might only have like four. Like he's got he's going to be held to account every election. Year, you could have a year and a half. Yeah, exactly. They could win back Selby and Insty. Hmm. Whereas Charlotte Owen just gets to be there. The, but the thing for me is all of these arguments that you're making, they're arguments against the House of Lords, right? That it's unelected. That some of them sit yeah. for life. Like, and that's <laughs> fine. And we can have the discussion about whether or not actually, it's right that the House of Lords sits in that way, but. It exists in the way that it exists. Surely, it is for the better to have younger people in there representing the political interests yes, of younger I, people. I, I agree with that. I don't think Charlotte Owen is that right person. Because think about the people who get elected. So you're supposed to be elected, given a lordship, made a member of the House of Lords, for like because you are a captain of industry, years of public service, not because you were mates with the prime minister. I, th I think of the other appointments. Is it, is, I think I, most, I mostly object to the people who were appointed by Boris Johnson, like Ian Botham got it for services to Brexit. I think that's silly as well. Mm. It's, it's, not just, it's not just Charlotte Owen isn't the only objection, and I don't think her being young pushes back against the cronyism of it. But again, for me, that, that's a criticism of the resignation honours list, which again is a valid criticism and is like one we can one we can. Why discuss. can't we do both? Because I'm, 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 I'm trying to say that 
okay, yes, we have an unelected chamber that scrutinises our, law, our, our laws. Yes, uh, prime ministers get to make honours when they resign. I disagree with both of those things. Well, actually, maybe not so much on the unelectable point of the House of Lords, and we can have that conversation if we want to, but it's, it's true. They exist. That's how it works in this country. And if we accept that we're going to debate sort of, you know, the pros and cons of things that happen within those things, then it's a, a good that a 30-year-old is in there because but they're going to think I think, that's, no. I think that's so... Like, Narrow. Or just it's, it's not nuanced enough. I, th I think that you, the pros and cons, a 30-year-old is in there, cons, she's in there because she worked for Boris Johnson for a year and a half and did nothing. Mm. I think, a thir like, like I said earlier, a 30-year-old who had genuinely changed and helped the country is not just any 30-year-old. It's, it's like um, descriptive representation. It's like, what's it about? If um, it's like using, it's a, I think it's a very blunt object, <clears throat> very blunt way to improve youth representation of just choosing any 30-year-old to, to go into the House of Lords. I don't think that achieves anything. Like Jamal Edwards, I could imagine him being put into the House of Lords. For example, do you remember Jamal Edwards, who was like the uh, oh, yeah. SBTV, you yeah, know, like yeah, yeah. All, you know, huge. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah, all right, Ollie. <laughs> 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 but I'm just saying, as an example of right. someone who was 30, sure, and well, I um, can imagine them making quite a, a big impact in the House of Lords because of all the wealth of experience that they had. Mm. Now I'm going to say something really controversial. <laughs> I think Nadine Dorries has had more claim to be becoming yeah. a peer than Charlotte Owen does. Definitely. Well, yeah, she, she definitely did. At least Nadine Dorries, I mean, like, you know, we agree on nothing. And I think what she did was horrendous. <laughs> However, at least she had some kind of experience with, like, you know, procuring vaccines, being a health minister during the pandemic, writing all the books that she did, actually being inside government and being an MP for all of that time. There's actually at least some kind of experience there that you can draw on. I don't understand how doing comms for the prime minister qualifies you to now scrutinise legislation. Forever. Forever. Charlotte Owen was in government during the pandemic as well. Yeah, but for what, a year? Why do you have this? Why are you so upset? I'm, 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 are you no, so pro Charlotte Owen? I'm not pro Charlotte Owen. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to um, impose a bit of intellectual honesty on um, the arguments you're making. Um, I can't wait to read the comments personally. Oh, no, people, go, people went absolutely nuts at me last time do uh, it again. I made this argument, so they'll do it again. Well, you um, should stop coming on here and using this to, you know, platform Charlotte <laughs> Owen. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte Owen, come on in. Um, yeah. <laughs> Shall we talk about this in the context of kind of tactical voting as well? Because... Shall, well, we can't. No, the by We can't de 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 the yeah. from where we've gone on a big old tangent to. Um, it was similar in the local elections, right? We sort of saw the, the initial signs of an increase in tactical voting, and the same thing is happening now. Um, again, by-elections, different generals. But, you know, uh, Labour don't really campaign in Somerton and Froome. They actually lose their deposit, uh, which is... Quite interesting for a major party. Only 2.6% of the vote. Lib Dems win. And then in Selby, the Lib Dems finish sixth behind Reform, behind the Yorkshire Party. Um, and in Uxbridge, the Lib Dems got just 526. I mean, that really indicates to me that in each of those constituencies, the electorate is plumping for the second place. They're, they're making sure that the second place replaces the Tory. Um, I think that's... If that, if that bears out in a general election, then it could be absolutely catastrophic for the mm -hmm. Conservatives. You've also got to think about how expensive it is to campaign in a constituency. It's incredibly expensive. And as we know, Labour has no money at the moment. Mm. Like, it really doesn't have... It's paying out hell of a lot of money in court fees and libel fees and all sorts of things like that because of the anti-Semitism cases that were brought against the party. Mm. Um, or not just that, actually. Data breaches, loads of stuff. Yeah. So for them Running to go... Membership. Yeah, for them to storm down to Summerton and Froome and go, do you know what? We're going to spend, you know, <clears throat> it's hundreds of thousands of pounds it is to campaign. Mm -hmm. They don't have it. And the Greens are solid third in every single constituency. Well, a distant third, but still third. Still third. Where was Lawrence Fox? Uh, I saw him in Uxbridge. Did he, did Binface beat him? He, I know he lost Maybe. his deposit. Yeah, he, oh, he, didn't do, he didn't do well. But what's important about that is that the day of the by-election... <laughs> they tweeted out a picture of him. They were like, could this be the next prime minister? Oh. And the electorate went, no. He's <laughs> <laughs> it, also just, I think to most normal people, he's an absolute nothing candidate. Yeah, you wouldn't no know one who he knows, was. No one knows who he is. No one wants to. It's, I think it's just kind of media people and fringe right-wing figures know who he is and like him. Mm. I think, like, I, I thought on Wednesday, I don't want to talk to Lawrence Falls because I don't want him to 
he's he's not a big enough and as proven by the votes that he had he had no bearing or waiting on that by election yeah well you didn't interview the monster raver looning party did you so well, that, I've exactly that, what, exactly or i didn't i didn't well i didn't interview oh no i did interview the lib dems but we didn't publish it <laughs> so <laughs> that's how much waiting there was you did however invite bin face into this studio and sit down with him yeah, for yeah. about half an hour yeah we needed some numbers for <laughs> In a book out. I, I do think it's different. his commitment to the bit is quite extraordinary. Yeah. Maybe that's the same for Lawrence Fox. <laughs> it's performance art. It's uh, performance art. Lawrence Fox is a character.